I know. So my name is Patricia Mpangala. I work as a forensic psychiatric practitioner. I have a long experience working in prison system here in England. And I've worked most of the prisons in London, like um, mostly is male prison. You know, I work in, in Penterville and Young Offenders Prison. I've worked in Brixton. Those who live in London, who live in London or UK, they might probably be aware of this, this prison. So um so um, his, my experience is I've worked with, uh, with uh, different kind of, uh, of young people from uh, 15 to uh, 21 and, and adults and mental health and gangs uh, and, uh, you know, and, and people who have, a, who have a serious crime crime issues with the mental illness. So that's what they call forensic. So uh, that's where I've been for the last uh, seven years. And uh, today I'm going to let me share my screen. Can you see that? Yeah, can you see I'm that? I'm go next. <laughs> I'm trying to go next. <laughs> if you click, if yeah. you click, and then oh, good. You can, you can okay. Go okay. So we'll start with our presentation. So as we know, gang is uh, is antisocial behavior. It can be part of antisocial behavior. It can be criminal activity, and definitely most of it is illegal. So uh, the community reaction. What do people understand by 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 gang? So uh, my, my well, the structure of my presentation, Nanza Nahanda, I will start almost like a conclusion, the end part to the but to the you know beginning. Koyon Tanzana community reaction. How do community seeing as gangs? There, there's there's postcode gangs, and um, which if you live in London, certain postcode, let's say Stratford, you don't see eye to eye with people living, let's say uh, North London, probably Holloway. And there's a uh, family disconnected where a lot of them are family. They, they don't speak with their families. families out because of what they've joined gang. They have isolated themselves after their trauma. Dysfunctional families. Dysfunctional families means what family and Bazanyingi, they either either mom or dad is not there, or they're kind of missing their uh, when I when I miss a role model or I miss an adult to keep an eye on them. And then there's where family where society is turning a blind eye. We 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 know what is happening, but a lot of the people they're in denial. Kunato and Bot Tozawa may join this kind of gang, like you know, they're just turning a blind eye, or they're pretending not to know. And do society do recognize it? So um number of police when we record gang, when we record a knife and sharp instrument offenses in London from 2015, Paka 2022, as we see statistics, you can see the numbers here. Yeah? So to get 2016 Paka now, as you see, is increasingly. So this is quite an, um, it's quite recent. It's updated. You will not find when you crime police on Met on the website. You can get this information. As you see, the NZF Saba Paka Sevitu Kwenyefuna Moje. So it's quite increasingly every year. And um, now when you talk about uh, gang, like I said, Nyuma. What do people understand the meaning of, uh, we can say why people join gangs. You know, uh, people join gangs because they want recognition. To be recognized as someone, you know, that's what they think. Uh, excitement as well, that they may join gang, I belong somewhere, to our friends, you know, to have acceptance, that I've accepted to a certain society, to a certain community, to a certain friendship. In sense of belonging, because what to Wengi, as we know, what to Wengi, you know, uh, let's say um, Africans uh, and Caribbeans, unakuta mtu ame lose the sense of belonging. He doesn't know if he's English or he's African or he belongs to a certain family, belongs to dad or to mom. It's just so confusing. So they're finding that their own belonging or they're being rebellious to wazazi, koyo, they want to find somewhere where they can belong. So sense of belonging, that is the big part of it power over other people. That's what they feel, that they are very powerful. Money from the crime, most of it come from the drug selling. I'll talk about protection. They promise each other that they're protecting from each other. They're protecting from other people. And in wow, when I, they, they're protecting, like I'm your brother, I'm your sister. The ter territory. So most of it, you know, on a cast for they say, this is our territory. It means to Wengina Kitoka Ilford, it's a problem. Respect. They feel like I'm, have, I'm getting respect from my colleagues, my friends. So you know that that's the way it goes. 
And uh, being in a gang, a lot of them, they think it's a fantasy. And, uh, and for children may think it being in a gang in, in our part, grandma's lifestyle, like what I've explained there. But the reality is very different. Being in a gang usually put children and young people at more risk of committing drugs, dealing or taking drugs, ending up in prison, being a victim of violence or even death. So uh, most of the time, what to occur when you gang, unakuta either if they come out with help, with professional help, unatomona idea, or they end up in prison or they end up dead. And uh, we all know gang, there's no law against uh, banning gangs. It's, you know, there's no law about it. Lakini, there's law about criminal activity that is the gangs that they actually involve in. Because a lot of gangs mostly associated with criminal activity that is selling drugs, you know, keeping, keep, keeping illegal like weapons, you know, most of the time they're always fine with knives, with, uh, with machetes, with uh, samurais. Th this happen every day when they do uh, stop and search as, as you know, permit, us, permit the police to do stop and search whatever they see fit, regardless of color or, you know, or ethnicity. But that's what it is. And, um, if you're your child in a gang, I always say you need to talk to your child. You know, it can be quite tricky, but uh, as a parent, you need to stay calm. You need to ask questions rather than accusation. Uh, listen carefully. I will find out uh, what Toto and Kwaki joined gang. They change their slangs. They change the way they're talking. You know, they are very uh, secretive. They are maneno na utumi and tofauti ambao akiwa nyumbani tunaweza tu kushangana kwa very secretive and kwa very private ukipokea simu yake is a problem is always hiding when he answered their phone you know so as a parent we we have to be very vigilant and to know what watoto zetu chumbani wana wana kit nini because a lot of times Watoto police when I read in the house for these young people in their homes was Zazi when I kuwa our Yui under the bed or under the mattress Watoto when we find AK-47 that is a, a type of gun is very common na machetes knife wana to me are very very common on Boeing na unakuta wengine wana find with probably like 5,000 pounds under the mattress was Zazi have no clue it's only the time we we raid police when I do it. Or you'd be surprised, actually, some parents, they actually know, but when I accept the matter of fact, because these young people on our side, they Wazazi financially. That's another topic that is quite huge. Wazazi, they know what to do with gang, like, because when I do our what to do with the so they kind of keep quiet until, you know, it blows over, it blows it out. Like I'll, I'll talk about the signposting uh, later. Let me first talk about another big thing that is what's happening now is called uh, the jumpy one of the slides in to county lines. County lines is um, it's an illegal, so the definition of county lines is an illegal activity of criminal activities that is between one area to the other. So usually they use vulnerable people uh, they target uh, children and vulnerable adults to carry drugs from one county to the other, from one area to the other, from one postcode to the countryside. So usually the county lines drugs in Atoka from London and then the other places outside London. And um, I wanted to share something here quickly. And... Uh, Can you see that? Yeah, we can see it. Okay. Can you see that? The BBC News, the counterline drug trade? Yes, we can see that. Okay, so we from BBC, or oh, as you can see, the June's in the report, I'm going to care for county lines. I'm to care just this, this year itself. 11th of Feb, Paka Save to end of July. Kulkwa kuna wame raid a lot of houses that ambazo zime usika ku kuchukua a total from you know they probably they, they get schools from uh, kids wanna collect from the street or from, from corner shops or from chips when I promise Labda Viatu, when I promise anything small. Now nakuta tuto probably they are unaware wana kubali, and once they accept wanambiwa now you owe us, you know, the debts you belong to us, otherwise we are going to kill your mother or kill your father. 
or kill your siblings and mostly wanakuwa wamejua watoto wanaishi wapi kwa hiyo watoto they get scared then they, then they are told not to tell their parents kwa hiyo watoto wanakuwa wana wana kwenye bagi zao wanabebwa drugs wanaambiwa peleka Birmingham somewhere kuna mtu anakusubiri Birmingham so the children they sometimes they miss school and mzazi paka anajua siku watoto wame miss school paka the school probably contact the parents later in the evening wengine wana contact even morning but they still can find they can find the children where they are kwa mtoto anapewa nauli analipwa ticket anatoka London anaenda ku drop Ella many drugs Birmingham na anapewa Birmingham ana collect Ella na later London one letter to back to London when i say maybe drug money right now is almost like 800,000 they're making out of county lines and uh, that's quite a huge number now most watoto ambao wana transport is drugs they are very vulnerable kids most makuta wazazi ambao they're going through a lot of issues at home they don't recognize them to take a shule or they are not kwa mzazi ambao yuko reason sometimes mtoto akiwa involved kwenye count lines mtoto aki disappear for a week we all should be asking question where is my child sasa unakuta wazazi wengine watoto wame disappear hawana habari because they have a lot of substance misuse at home they probably or even sometimes mom is so long working and anajua mtoto ameenda shule amerudi jioni ana miss ana miss calls from schools so it's, it can be that it's a lot of uh, issues within uh, like i said dysfunctional families and some of them cannot be dysfunctional families can be mom and, mom and dad there but mtoto still is like involved come out if you're not really vigilant and mtoto is not aware of what himself is getting himself into so these are all come out very easy bbc may report there are quite of raids it may happen over time january and uh, information yes. Sam in samani samani ku interrupt kijana wangu amejoin na hajui kiswahili kwa hiyo naomba ikiwezekana uongee if you can speak english most of the time please oh good how old is your son he's 28 he's not uh, in drugs oh, he's not in oh, gangs okay okay <laughs> that's good so uh where was that so this is another site where you can get information about national crime agency and nspcc and buzz on a report a lot of uh children about they've joined sorry um, am i mixing all right can you hear me that a little because i have to mix i think some people there that you know king gelez and apenye and tatizo and you know from tanzania so i'm trying to mix does he understand a little bit of mix of of, of swanglish so um yeah but anyway so i'll proceed and um so let me stop sharing this i'll go back to uh to my powerpoint okay um Yeah, so I was talking about the county lines where I've, I've already explained and I've shown there that there are more, it stays more than 4,000 Londoners that defined as the drug gangs. Like I've mentioned that they deliberately target children and vulnerable adults. And most of vulnerable adults, are, most of it are mental illness people. So Nakuta, um, an adult who is not aware of what they're supposed to be doing or they are not aware of the consequences, so they kind of join and most of it are like um, you know mental health uh, patients and uh, within London and people are quite vulnerable you know disabled children we know some like mild autism as well a lot of them they're quite independent so they they tend to move from one place to another they quite use them and by the time they uh, the family tend to know it's quite too late so I can give one example that uh, um, a couple of months ago we we helped one of the one of the one of the boy join i know the parent one of the boy joined the gang and he actually disappeared from the house the whole week so the police uh, and the mother they were working the police were working together with the mother so what happened is when the boy went there without himself realizing got himself in trouble went to birmingham they um the mom was communicating with the mother so he said to the mother that the mother said to him um why can't you take a picture where you are because he wasn't sure where you are because you know as soon as you arrive in birmingham you you call, you take that drug from london to birmingham what it is is they take you to a house where you sometimes they fold your your eyes uh they you, you're blindfolded so you won't even know where you're going and usually it's a place that you you're not familiar with so we told the the, the boy he can take the picture from where he's at you know anything so luckily the boy took a picture from his phone on the street just outside the door from the street and we managed to see the car 
registration. What the police says, what the police did is they actually um, they tracked down the car registration number that was outside the house and they found the owner. So from there, they managed to raid the house. So, but when they went there, they did not mention that, you know, we got in touch with their mother or we got in touch with that uh, from the picture. So they had to make sure the police, they are working in discreet as if they were just raiding the house because it's suspicious, you know? So they had to contact the police liaison with the police in Birmingham, they had to raid the house. So that's how the boy was eventually you know, retrieved, but it was quite, it, the boy disappeared for uh, a week, like I said, for, and he was just 14, 14. So like I said, as young as nine, these kids are joining gangs. So it's not about being over 18. It's not about being 16. As young as nine, kids have disappeared from home. And uh, during the lockdown, there was a lot of uh, uh, reports. They reported that a lot of young people were getting lost. You know, and a lot of them, they were actually hidden in these houses. And most of these houses, like I said, they are located mostly outside London, where they've been sent, uh, to, they've been used as, as a drug career. Because, you know, um, usually at, when you go to uh, either King's Cross or Paddington, you know, those are the main stations they like to use to go outside. Usually they, um, when you find a boy who's 11 and 12, the police are unlikely to stop him because some of them, they look young. So they are likely to stop them. They just assume probably the boy is coming from school or the boy is going to visit family. They don't really stop them. So most of the time, the, drug, the, the bags they're carrying is carrying a whole huge amount of drugs. And they usually say it costs almost sometimes uh, 80,000 pounds, 70,000 pounds, quite a lot of money. So, um, but nowadays, uh, because of counter lines that uh, uh, the police are quite aware and they, in every police station, in every... Uh, train station nowadays, you tend to find the police, transport police actually, they are trained for this. They're trained to detect when a, a young person is vulnerable and is probably carrying a bag, they tend to stop them and ask them questions. But like I said, the parent yourself as well, you need to be very vigilant, you need to be observant of where your child, where about, what they're up to, who, who are their friends. If your child is saying is going, after school is going to meet their friends, you need to find out who their friends are. You need to find their parents. Where do they live? Because a lot of time, parents are quite busy. They are not aware of the of their kids have joined. They have friends who are actually, um, they join gangs. So your, your particular child might not be in a gang, but he's got a friend who is in a gang. So that can be a problem too, because they tend to hurt people that do their love or people who are friends with. So even your friend as well, you need to make sure that he's aware of a friend if he's in a gang, even if he's not sure. But you can tell, you can just always uh, teach your child like things to look up. There's a lot of online help nowadays. There are things that you can you can read, you can you can learn. Like I've given a website here, a National Crime Agency, NSPCC. They're explaining a lot about counter lines, which is quite really common because counter lines is actually managed by gangs. So uh, proceed. Um, so these are, I think I did this presentation a couple of years ago and I mentioned that 2018 itself, these were all, you see, these were all the stabbings in London. We're talking about from January to December. Look at that, that is quite a lot. That is quite a lot, it's quite a lot. And um, I don't know if you've been managed to see this map. So these are the map that is highlighting where counter lines and where drugs committed. So if you see these pinks, that's what they're showing you here is uh, the, the, the gangs, where the gangs are located. So they, all these are the names, as you see, 46, those are the names they use. And I'm sure by now, because this is as for um, updated 2019. So 20, this is 2022 now. So we might be having something more than this. So this is just North London gang, because North London gang is quite known. It's got a very large portion of, of, of gangs. And we have East London as well, where you have Bam, we have uh, Barking, you have Stratford, but these are the ones, the gangs down here, they're quite small, but you've got North London where they've got quite a huge gangs. But don't mistake, we do have gangs that are white as well. These are mostly majority, they're black. We do have white, you know, non-black gangs like Russia, you know, um, uh, East Europeans, they have a lot of gangs as well, but mainly we're talking about black because it's it's more violent. It's quite very violent. The, you don't hear a lot of time that uh, the Russians or the East European they're stabbing each other. 
It's mostly, our, um, unfortunately, our Black people, our Black kids, they tend to stab each other. So that's the reason we're just focusing on gang related majority in, within our Black society. And um, like I mentioned before, like your child might feel pressure to follow friends, you know, like why? This is a, just advice for, for parents and things to be aware, you know, you know, before you talk to your child and about guns, you need to make sure that, you know, you know what you're talking about. And you need also to understand why young people are drawn towards guns in the first place. Just make sure you understand what's going on with your child. In, in simple, just look at your child and find out what is going on. You know, if your child is disappearing at a home, if your child comes late all the time, is very secretive, he's hiding things in his room, he doesn't want to talk to you, he changes language. Most of the time you hear kids are start talking in different languages. You're using a lot of slangs because a lot of gang members, uh, children, they start using all these slangs that you, you and I might not understand, but they do understand. With my experience working in prison, I do to understand, I tend to understand every word when people talk it, you know, and uh, even in on the street when I'm at the shop in a supermarket, I do tend, when you hear young people talking, they have a different lingo that they use, that most of the time they're using, the, you know, they usually people belong on a certain gang, they tend to use them. So we, we kind of have that kind of trainings in, in my place of work that, you know, these are the things that we, we need to be aware of what they're saying. Because they might be talking about you, they're talking even to rob you. You are standing there, you probably they're speaking English, but you're thinking, what, what are they talking about? They're using a certain slang word, but they know what they're saying. Um, know the signs. Uh, there is number of warning, like I say, to look out for your child, you know, like I said, you know, appearance, new slang words, new friends. And uh, you could be seeing probably he, that your, your, your child had a very good friend and then they're falling out with that child, with that friend, and then you join another friend, you're thinking you don't understand why, what's the reason. You can as well find out from your child and just speak to them, you know. And um, like I said, what you can do for your child, speak to them, you know, understand why they've joined. Seek help. If you think your child has joined gang or you suspect, stay calm. And don't just confront him like that because you give him a reason of running to the gang because already the gang, they've already told him that we are your family. You know, anything happens to you, you know, we'll deal with it. We're going to protect you. So, you know, even if the, it's their parents, they will protect you from your parents. So this, they manipulate the kids very well. Like I said, it's as young as nine, they tend to, they tend, uh, they tend to join the gang. So these are the things that we need to be aware. Of. And, uh, Make sure that you listen, not just listening with your ears, you know, active listening, you know, means listening means you observe, you know, you watch, you know, you actually read listening, you listening between the words, listening how, how he's talking to his friend, you know, just so really be vigilant. We really need to be careful on that. And um, signpost and help. Um, I think that the gentleman that I invited last time for gang, he works with Courage 22. Uh, the, the gentleman I did invite last time when we had a face-to-face -face meeting, and uh, he he works with the with it's a non-government organization. It's called uh, Cash Twenty Two, where they deal with drug project. They deal they work with schools and they work in prison. I met them while they work in prison. Where if I, I've seen a boy who is definitely going down through the gang, I usually I usually refer them to them. So what what Cash Twenty Two does is they try to help a boy to come out of the gang safely. Because most of the time when a child is coming out of the gang is by knife, you know? So you have to make sure that you involve profession that they help a child to come out of the gang safely. Means they're engaging with them, they're helping them this. And most of the time they have to be moved from the area. So if they live in Barking, they probably have to move way far from Barking. And most of the time they move them out of London to be safe. And probably they can even move the old family because they, when the child joined the gang, usually the old family is at risk. So these are the things that we need to be aware. There is a lot of um, a charity nowadays. This is, my, this is the old presentation I did. I added some few bits, but there's a lot of more nowadays. They kind of... Um, working with young people. They send gears trust that they should even provide um, accommodation as well. And there's e Gang Safe for London, that they actually work with a Transport for London, the Safe for London. There's uh, Why Stop Legal Advice and Guidance for Parents. So these are the things you can, you can get help. And, you know, um, it might not be your child, but it might be your neighbor. And, and when your neighbor, your living is your friend with your child, uh, 
you know, you're likely to, your child might end, are likely to end up there. So it's very important as parents, we, we are aware of these things. And uh, yeah, so thank you very much for listening. And I'm just checking if I've missed anything. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask. Um, yeah, I did not mention this because this is another topic about uh, the drugs that a lot of um, kids are selling. You know, most of it, uh, not just um, cannabis or marijuana, it's something called spice. Spice is, um, is artificial. What, what is, what's the word I called? Um, uh, it's an artificial drug that they mix with a lot of chemicals that it does give drug induced psychosis. And you see a lot of young people that suffer from mental illness and uh, it might not be hereditary, might not be from either dad or mom have had it, but because of the drug that they've used and most of it, people who are involved in doing this are gang. They're selling anything that is sellable, anything that can make profit, they can make money. So they don't care what goes in your body. They just care about the money and power. So these are the things that I wanted to highlight. So thank you very much. And if you have any questions, please. I hope I did not go too fast. Yeah. I tried my 15 minutes, so. <laughs> thank you very much, Patricia. I think this was an um, excellent presentation. Um, I think we'll go to the next presentation, which is on alcohol and then we will welcome questions and answers. Um, I did allow more time because this topic is very important and I think people have been benefiting a lot from this gang culture and the language used. So yeah, if you could please uh, stop sharing, that's excellent. And then we'll move on to the next session. So the next session will be about alcohol, alcohol misuse. And it's something that is, um, extensively used everywhere, as we know. And it's something that is legal. So because it's legal in the sense that you can buy alcohol in most of the places, it's readily available. But because it's legal, it doesn't mean that it's not harmful or it's harmless. And that's why we want to highlight today the issues around alcohol misuse. And uh, what we are going to present under this topic is first of all, to raise awareness on effects of alcohol misuse and also services available. So we hope by the end of this session, we'll be able to understand aspects of alcohol dependence. And if a person is alcohol dependent, where can they seek help? So first of all, when we talk of alcohol, I think it's something that is, taken as, uh, depending upon where you live and what you use, it can be given different names. For example, um, I think there are local names like Tembo, um, or sometimes Konyagi, or sometimes you also have local brews that are given different names. All in all, what is important is there is alcohol, which we call ethanol and that is what gives the effects of the drink that a person is taking now we have to differentiate the normal alcohol that is sold in shops to the one that sometimes people uh, brew locally that may contain other impurities especially methanol which is very very toxic and it can cause blindness and other side effects so that's why sometimes you do hear stories of people who have consumed local brew somewhere and they have ended up having uh, different side effects. Uh, the question of drinking or not drinking is a personal matter. As I said, alcohol is sold legally in many areas of the world, including UK and Tanzania. And alcohol comes in different concentration, but end of the day, it's about the amount that you are taking that can ultimately cause the effects of alcohol. So consumed sensibly, what we call two drinks per day or two units, that can be okay in terms of our health, but anything more than that can be harmful. This is um, 
a picture of a supermarket where you go and you see the different types of alcoholic drinks. As you can see, um, in Avutia Sana, I think the way they are bottled or the way they are marketed, it doesn't seem that is something that is harmful. And we use alcohol for different reasons. When people sometimes are happy, they use alcohol. When people are in a sad mood, they also use alcohol. So depending upon the situation, you can find alcohol being used um, in different situations. It's one of the um, huge problems in terms of health services. As you can see here, 35% of all accident and emergency attendances are alcohol related and up to 70% of attendances during the weekends are alcohol related. So it's a huge problem. Unfortunately, besides being a huge problem, it's not very well funded in terms of the services. Um, alcohol misuse contributes 1.2 million incidents of violent crime. These are the social impacts of alcohol misuse. About 40% of domestic violence cases, 6% of all road accidents, and up to 2.6 million children lead with hazardous drinkers, and up to 17 million working days are lost annually because of alcohol-related um, absences. And as I said before, up to 70% on weekends can be due to alcohol misuse. The annual cost to NHS is about 2.6 billion. I may have to touch briefly here that, as I said, alcohol is legal in this country and many other countries. So although the nation is spending 2.6 billion per year, the income generated from alcohol industry is far much higher than this. So there is a profit in terms of what is spent on alcohol and what is um, the government is um, pocketing in from the revenues and taxes. I spoke about the units and depending upon what you are drinking, two units per day is the recommended where it's not contraindicated because there are certain conditions, even two units can be too much. I'll come back to that. But I can briefly say that um, the small, what we call um, measure of spirit, that is taken as one unit. So two of those per day, and if you don't drink every day, about three days in a week, maximum four, and the rest of the days you don't touch alcohol, that's okay. Anything more than that can cause harm to our health. Uh, if you take lagers, beers, they are normally less concentrated. So you may find that a can of beer has got about one, 1 1.5, up to two units of alcohol, depending upon the concentration of alcohol in it. Another thing I would like here to mention is it doesn't matter whether you are drinking spirits or you are drinking lager or um, any other lighter um, sort of um, preparations. What is important is the number of units that you are taking in, whether it's spirits or beer. End of the day, whatever amount of alcohol we take into our bodies is processed by the liver. So if you take a lot of, let's say, lagers or beers, more than certain amount of units that your body can process, of course, it will also cause the same harm like taking uh, spirits. On the other side, if you take just two measures of spirits per day, that could be the amount that is not causing any harm. So just to emphasize that it's not like the person who drinks spirits will be more harmed than the person who is drinking lagers or the less concentrated drinks. As I said, not everybody can consume alcohol. There are certain conditions where we normally um, say that a person should not touch alcohol. And one of them is pregnancy. There was a time when it was um, advised that if you are pregnant, you can take some amount of alcohol. 
But nowadays, it's recommended that it's better to abstain when a person is pregnant. Uh, if you're also on certain types of medications, you may be advised not to touch alcohol. If you're already ill, having liver conditions, cancer or heart conditions, uh, you may be advised not to touch alcohol. Um, where the diabetes is not under control, then alcohol may be not advised. Um, there is a condition that is called pancreatitis, and this is the organ that produces enzymes that we use for digesting food. If you have this condition, alcohol may not be advised. And of course, the issue of age. As I said before, although alcohol is legal, it's not like everyone can, can um, drink alcohol. In this country, buying alcohol is from the age of 18, but with the parents from the age of 14 or 16, um, young people can also consume if they are with the parents, let's say with a male. Very briefly to mention that any person who drinks excessively will have the effects of alcohol in different parts of the body. And these are just some of them I have mentioned here, like gut problem, sleeping problem, um, accidents, unable to lose weight because there are calories in alcohol, social responsibilities like fighting, promiscuity, uh, and you can see some signs of, of excessive drinking. For example, uh, being full of bottles or cans or people have memory problems. Sometimes you might find people have got excuses for not doing or attending work. So they're hiding, they're not telling the truth. Relationship problems are very common because money is not spent for family, it's spent for uh, funding the, the drinking habit. Sometimes people cannot hold a job because um, they're not attending to work regularly. And also there might be other, other social reasons that might indicate that there is an alcohol problem here. This is another summary of effects of, of alcohol, excessive drinking. As you can see, right from the brain up to every parts of the body, um, alcohol can be harmful. This is a healthy normal liver where a person may be drinking sensibly, but if there's excessive drinking, the one of the organs that are affected is liver. You can see this extended abdomen is because the liver is enlarged. And behind here, you can see the consistency of affected liver, which is quite different from the one we showed before. Ultimately, um, a person can develop cancer. Uh, this is another sign of excessive drinking, jaundice. And we can, we, can, we can know this by doing different lab tests, which I won't go into that this moment. Um, very quickly, I will go now to treatment because time is not in our favor. If a person is experiencing problems around alcohol misuse, there are different areas where you can go for, for treatment. And one of the uh, places you can start is your GP. GP know, most of the GPs know where to, to refer you because every local authority has got alcohol and drug services. They can refer you there and they can help you whether you want to stop drinking or you want to reduce drinking or you want um, psychosocial support in terms of counseling or to send you for a longer term treatment rehabilitation, they can also guide you to, to those services. We try to make the treatment as holistic as possible so that people get the maximum benefit uh, out of the treatment. Um, I won't go further. I think um, I will stop here because um, I want to invite Dr. Mlawa to briefly tell us the experience from hospital admission of people from the um, endocrinological point of view who might have been affected by excessive alcohol misuse. So things like liver cirrhosis, things like pancreatitis and consequences of that. So Dr. Mlawa, please, um, if you could uh, share some information for 
um, five minutes, and then you can answer questions and that. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much for inviting me to talk about um, hormone problem and alcohol consumption. Uh, by hormone problem, I mean both uh, diabetes and other hormone problem. But let me talk in terms of what do we see at the front line in terms of patients coming to hospital with alcohol problems and whether they've got other hormone problem or metabolic problem. So the commonest presentation we see with alcohol, somebody who has been drinking heavily for a few years, the, the alcohol can damage the part of the pancreas which produces insulin. And therefore, they will, they will not be able to produce insulin. And that can contribute to diabetes, especially type 2 diabetes. And, and the mechanism for this is explained by the fact that alcohol can cause inflammation of the pancreas, causing acute pancreatitis. And with that, the part of the pancreas which produces insulin, the so-called the beta cells, they can be affected. And therefore, these patients, they can start having high sugar levels and therefore diabetes. We have got a few patients who are known alcoholics and every time they come, they will come with tummy pain. And if they've got abnormal pain, it will show that maybe they've got something called acute on chronic pancreatitis and therefore it's, it's ongoing problem. They need admissions and they, they can stay in hospital for a few days. And I'll tell you that one hospital admission to spend a, a night in the hospital, the bed costs about 700 pounds. And then these patients, they might stay maybe at least a week and just count the cost of looking after this patient because of um, the fact that they take alcohol. Then they are, they are put in medications to, um, uh, for diabetes, that's number one. And um, not only alcohol reduce the insulin levels, I mean, the insulin levels, there's part of the pancreas which produce other enzymes which help to break down food, such as um, when you eat anything with fat, it may be broken down. If you eat anything with protein, it may be broken down. And some of these enzymes, the so-called exocrine enzymes, they play part in uh, helping in terms of digestion. So most of these patients with a chronic pancreatitis, they, they've got difficult in terms of digesting food. And if you look at them, they will be very malnourished. They will, they will be underweight. And they are put on something called Creon to try and, and support that. So that's as far as alcohol is concerned for alcohol and diabetes, alcohol and di digestive system. What about other hormone problems? There are a few of them, but I think to try and make the point valid is about being taking alcohol and in terms of fertility. I'll give you an example for men. Those who are heavy drinkers, alcohol somehow brings down the level of testosterone and therefore it affects the libido. It causes the so-called erectile dysfunction. And with that, there will be issue within families can be broken because of that, that somebody has got erectile dysfunction. And the mechanism is explained by the fact that where someone who is a heavy drinker, somehow it inhibits formation of uh, testosterone by breaking down testosterone to something as such as estrogen. And we have seen people who are heavy drinkers, they develop man boobs. They, they might have high estrogen level because the liver is not working properly. So alcohol can affect fertility, can affect reproductive system for men by that mechanism. But what about the women in terms of if a, a woman is drinks heavily, of course they can get the same problem such as pancreatitis, diabetes and other problems. But also we know that if someone is a heavy drinker, 
the periods, the menstrual period for women can be affected. It can cause irregular periods and therefore question mark infertility. Heavy consumption of alcohol can cause hypolactic level, and this also can cause irregular periods. So in summary, alcohol and hormone problem in terms of that it can cause diabetes because it can cause pancreatitis affecting part of the pancreas which produces insulin and therefore high sugar levels and therefore contributing to diabetes as one. But also I said that alcohol can affect other enzymes from the pancreas which help with digestion of, or breaking down of food and therefore these patients, if they're not um, digesting the food very well, they will be malnourished, they'll be underweight. I've also talked about alcohol and the reproductive system that it can cause lower libido, lower testosterone level in men, and therefore infertility. For women, it can cause irregular periods and therefore co contributing to infertility or lack of not being able to conceive. I can talk a lot, but I think that's in nutshell what we see at the front door in acute setting, but also what I see in my clinic, both for diabetes and endocrine. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Mlawa. Asante sana, Dr. Mlawa, na Patricia, na fikiri sasa ni wakati wa maswala na majibu. Uh, vile vile kama kuna contributions from the members ambao umehudhuria mkutano wetu wa leo kwa hivyo uanje uko wazi kwa maswala kama mtu anataka kuuliza swala tungeomba aonyeshe kidole tumpe chance aweze kuuliza au kama huwezi kuonyesha kidole just open your mic and then talk please yeah i think i i should be the first to start because i'm this is a very important and a very helpful topics. And um, the good thing is my my children, my two children are here and they are listening, which is a very good thing. And now the reason I'm, we are interested in this is actually to have the knowledge. But uh, my question is, we are looking at the 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 side effects of what I think there must be some reasons behind. Uh, for instance, I th I can I can think, thinking aloud, not that this is what happens, thinking aloud that uh, some people become alcoholics because of issues related to stress. Maybe they are stressed with their partners or in their marriage, marriage which is a dysfunction, a dysfunctional, or they have uh, issues which uh, possibly are somehow socially related. And in the same way, when it comes to gang culture, some of these kids, maybe they come from broken families, and maybe the mom or the, the dad they encourage them even if they know the consequences or sometimes they do it because they are afraid that pulling them out can trigger a retaliation so maybe we should also look at the social uh, factors which are part which i think are part of what is happening it's good that you have looked at the physical ones the consequences but what about the social, the social factors? If they can be uh, explored and possibly see how uh, they can be um, helped instead, instead of uh, treating somebody for uh, alcohol, maybe we should go to backward and see whether they are having issues related with their partners or whatever. And when it comes to children who are in gangs, instead of trying to help them out of gangs, can we go and see how the parents have been uh, drawn in, if at all the parents know about it? So that's my, my contribution, which is both a contribution and a question as well. Thank you very much, Vincent. I would think to uh, uh, allow another 
two questions, then we can reply and then take more questions. So there is a hand from DM. Please. Ah, it's it's me. Uh, yeah. Ah, Asante yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I just want to to thank uh, Trisha and uh, and uh, Dr. Salman, uh, Dr. Mlao for for this. I think the information is really useful. Trisha touched a really important part that the role parents play, really to make sure that at least we know where our children are, who they are friends, and that in itself is a good kind of way of actually knowing, being aware of who's, who are the friends of this young person. Otherwise, if we just let them just go, wherever they go, come anytime they, we th they, they think, then we don't know what they are doing. Yeah, these are issues are actually kind of bigger, as the previous uh, speaker mentioned, yes, that social issues, the fa family dysfunction and so on. But at least probably for today, I think uh, it's very useful as knowing the signs and knowing how to perhaps to help us get from, at, from the family level. And then when they go a little bit of the society level, then perhaps those are, we can influence uh, probably some decision makers from, um, from our views. But we as the parents as well, we need it, first of all, to be aware of all these things. Um, really, this is very useful. Just this links to probably what I do in my job as well, because we needed to talk to parents about these issues, really. To talk to parents, particularly the minority groups. Because uh, if we just say, oh, well, my son will come back later on, and then they get involved in these things, we need to be really mindful of what is going around there. In terms of the alcohol, I think the previous, uh, previous speaker mentioned, yes, some people perhaps are uh, uh, involved with alcohol because of perhaps social issues, pressure, family dysfunction, and so on. Yes, that can be a source of it, but it's not a treatment. So, so it's not a, you can't involve yourself in alcohol because of what? some other issues. Perhaps, yes, again, uh, Dr. Sal mentioned about the holistic approach. So we need to look at the whole thing there in order to support those children, who are uh, those people, why they involve in perhaps become alcoholic and so on. I think it's this has been very useful. Thank you very much, guys. Asante sana, Dr. Mlewa. Nafikiri kama kuna suwala jingine, tuchukwe wete na suwala tena moja. Anafikujibu haya masuwala matatu, bada ya tuteza kuendelea tina. Siju kama kuna mungine na suwala lalote, Okay, nafikiri kuna kama kuna contributions yoyote. Okay, naona kimya basi ni ni nimkaribishie Patricia aweze ku comment. Baadaye na mimi nita comment kidogo from the alcohol point of view. Patricia tafadhali. I can hear me. Yeah, you can hear you. Yeah. So I just missed that I was uh, busy attending to someone here. This little one has already started war. So, mm. can you repeat what you just said, please? Um, kulikuwa na swala hapa kutoka kwa Vincent. Sorry, sorry, doctor. Uh, I think sorry. We have two children here who are struggling with Swahili. So, if you can speak English, it'll be grateful, please. So, I, I was just mentioning that um, there were some questions about the. Uh, gangs and rather than looking the actual problem go a bit more holistic in terms of different factors contributing to to, to gang cultures and also um, looking in terms of the causes and also in terms of, of, of treatment. I think in summary, um, Mr. Vincent, I think that's what you mentioned. So if Patricia, you could comment on that, please. When we talk about holistic approach, uh, like I think I did mention about uh, a lot of uh, different kind of uh, uh, family dysfunctional families and uh, not just dysfunctional families that uh, people can, kids can actually join the gangs. It can be disability. I think I did mention about mental health. I mentioned about disability. Um, I mentioned about autism, especially kids who are not severe, who are mild. They tend to be quite active. They, you know, I've mentioned about, uh, I think ADHD, you know, uh, we, we've got a lot of majority of young people do have suffer from ADHD, they're quite hyperactive. And uh, those are the things as well, they can uh, actually, you know, they can result into, into gangs, definitely. And uh, I did mention about uh, be family being vi vigilant and not just to be working 12 hour shift, but just to be aware of what's going on around their children, what to, you know, to understand their friends, 
to understand who their friends are, are hanging out with, their friends, their friend's friend. So sometimes it can just not be your, your child who is in a gang. It can be the best friend of your child. That is a huge impact and people actually miss that. You know, you will think, oh, my child is not in a gang, but what is your child, what is your child's friends? What are they like? You know, you need to find out about your child friends. A lot, of, a lot of people, they tend to be hurt because of their friends. Not because it's not a direct thing, but it can be a friend of your child. So um, like uh, when you talk about holistic, so I'm talking about mental health. I'm talking about the factor of our parenting. I'm talking about the environment. You know, I'm talking about the all uh, the all parenting skills, and I wouldn't say, and I wouldn't say, uh, don't 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 come me wrong. I wouldn't say um, uh, kids who join gangs they're bad parenting. No, there is no such a bad parenting. It depends on how you view it, but we all we all raise our kids the way we see fit. But I'm talking about be vigilant and and be aware where your why your kid is up. And so where the school they're going to school with and with their children is and to be aware of the area that you live you know you can actually go to national crime in a geographical area on where you live anywhere where you live i'm talking about europe especially england you can check and then it will tell you that on the area where you live what is the highest crime and most of it, it it can actually just point it can be gangs it can be drugs and mostly if you say the drugs you just know there is gang because usually the drug related um is usually related to gangs so it's something um of the sort i don't know if i've answered the question thank you very much patricia i think i'll just add also from the point of alcohol along the same lines um alcohol has got social physical um and psychosocial effects so mental health i mean so if you look the aspects of alcohol misuse. In the same way, we've been talking about the drugs, we have to look, first of all, what is the cause, whether the person is drinking socially and it has escalated gradually to a point of becoming alcohol dependent, to a point that the person cannot voluntarily stop drinking. They have to drink to, um, to, to address the dependency which they have. And if they are not drinking, they are not able to function. Or it's because of um, other family problems, as we heard here, something that might happen in the family. And instead of seeking other so, sort of support like counseling and um, talking therapy, they opt to a quick solution, which is drinking, hoping that it will solve the problem. But because a lot of times uh, the problem is ongoing, people will continue drinking up to a point when they become dependent. I need to draw the attention of what we call binge drinking, where sometimes, especially with young people, they go to parties and uh, it could be a one-off opportunity where they binge and drink so much to a point that can um, alcohol can cause intoxication. And we've got um, stories of, of death due to alcohol intoxication where young people who don't have a tolerance to alcohol might have consumed too much alcohol to a point when they collapse and the organs stop functioning. Um, as I said, it happens with, with young people sometimes, but it can happen also with adults. So anything in excess is harmful and alcohol is, is, is one of those. Yeah. Any other questions, any other contributions? I've got some people here from from Tanzania, um, if they want to share one or two words in terms of gang and alcohol problems in Tanzania. If they feel they can do that. Ah, okay, I can see hand up there, please, PM. Yeah, hi, um, it's Petronella. Oh, please. <laughs> yes, uh, just uh, I want. I just wanted to uh, put some few words, maybe just a comment, and uh, to say thank you very much for very informative topic. Uh, it's quite crucial in our in our society and community where we live in, and um, uh, based on the work that I do, I think um, 
uh, having heard all the speakers, uh, Dr. Mlauer, uh, Patricia, and yourself, I think the take home message here is very relevant that we as parents, we need to know where our children are and uh, to, uh, to interact with them uh, and uh, be there for them whenever they need and always be professionally approach. I mean, be what I can say, um, to, to, uh, to, uh, to be able to <clears throat> liaise with the authorities in order to get um, help as, as soon as we notice the situation change. So far I can say brilliant, uh, brilliant work for both of you and thank you so much for this evening. That was very informative uh, talk, thank you. We can't hear you, Dr. Salem. Oh, sorry. Thank you very much, Patricia, for your contribution. And um, I, I was just trying to say that looking the time, we've got nine minutes beyond, and uh, I don't see any other hand here for contribution or question and answers. So I would like to take this opportunity to thank our presenters today, Dr. Mlawa and also Patricia for excellent presentation. And uh, before we adjourn, could I please ask um, sort of a final word from our speakers today, like sort of a takeaway before we, we leave here today. So maybe I'll start with Patricia, ladies first. I would like to say, uh, there's, a, there's a sentence that say, it takes a village to raise a child. So let's just be a village where we, are, we should look after one another, over, you know, especially when it comes to our children. So if you see, you, um, it might not be your child, like I've, I've said from the beginning, it might be your neighbor's child, it might be your cousin, your family's child. If you see there's something not right, you can just always alert the parents. I know some parents are in the past, I know I've approached some parents and they give you a very, a very uh, negative uh, response. And then after a couple of years, you hear about that child, it does pain me a lot. But what it's not like you're, you're, you're wishing ill of people, but you just want the best for our children. Our children are our next generation. So all this hard work we are doing, all this shift when you're working 12 hours, shift 24 hours, you don't get home, I don't work from back to back. What is the point if our kids end up in a system? You know, so like I say, it takes a video to raise a child. Let's just be vigilant and, and be wary and make sure you utilize the resources, your internet, read a lot, there's a lot of reports and, and, and online assistant out there. We should not be too negative about the police. I know some very good police officers that do help our children who are actually ending, ending up in, in this kind of lifestyle. That is all, thank you. Thank you very much, Patricia. Um, Dr. Mlawa. I just want to say thank you very much for inviting me to come and talk. It is a privilege to be part of this discussion. But in terms of uh, what we've talked to with regard to alcohol, I think everything in moderation has gotten is not harmful. And we know that if it's too much, it can cause a lot of problems, not only a uh, hormone problem, but it can cause cancer and other problems. And therefore, the take home message is one has to be careful. If you, you consume alcohol, it has been in moderation. If you are able to avoid it altogether, it will be even better. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Mlawa. And uh, from me, and on behalf of the two organizations today who organized this um, presentation, I would like to say thank you very much. I think from me, what I would like to say is um, services are available. So where it comes to a point where you think you need help, please come forward. There is no labeling and there's no asking why it happened, how you will be supported very positively. And um, as long as the person engages with the services, uh, they normally get the service which they need. These services are normally free here in the UK. Um, I'm not sure about other places. I think in Tanzania, if you go to government hospitals, equally they are free unless you go to private rehab, which even here you have to pay for private rehab. But 
please, if there is any issue, any problems, come forward and services are here to help. Thank you very much. And um, I wish you good evening and good night for those who are in Tanzania. We'll see you next month for another presentation, which of course we will uh, send out information. What will it be about? And you're always welcome to attend. Thank you very much.